name is Faisal, and uh, uh, I'll be presenting part of a bigger study. Uh, but today I'll be presenting on the prevalence of MRSA among veterinary staff and farm workers in Trungano, Malaysia. Uh, okay, before we begin, Trungano, I'm, uh, as you know, I'm from Malaysia. Malaysia is in Southeast Asia. I think Jeff, you were there <laughs> last month, and uh, Trungano is. A, this is actually um, uh, Peninsular Malaysia. It's between Thailand and Singapore, and uh, Trungano is actually a state, a East Coast state at the uh, east of Peninsular Malaysia. Okay, they have consists of eight main districts, and uh, the main activity, economic activity there, are livestock farming, agriculture, and fisheries. Okay, why I'm saying this because my sample will be collecting from the whole eight districts of Trungano in the uh, east coast of Malaysia. Okay, now we have listened uh, to many speakers about AMR and all that, and we are already aware that it's very dangerous, very important. Okay, like Dr. Dennis from Cameroon said that by 2050, about 10 million will die annually due to antimicrobial resistance. And uh, uh, by 2017, uh, in 2017, WHO has, uh, has identified that MRSA is one of the important candidates that are able to develop uh, AMR and is very uh, developed in an alarming way. And uh, uh, they have already, as you are aware, they have already uh, built out the tripartite FAO, OIE, and WHO intensify one health approach. Okay. So, for introduction, uh, methicillin resistant Staphylococcus aureus or MRSA is any strain of Staph aureus that contain the MACA gene, okay, and has developed resistance to the mainly beta lactams antibiotics. It was found that MRSA is capable of making a penicillin binding protein which is encoded by the MACA gene. Uh, MRSA was first discovered in 1961 in a hospital located in the UK after methicillin was just introduced. Later on, MRSA were recovered from community in the late 1990s and animals at early of the 21st centuries. Now, uh, LA MRSA or MRSA uh, is able to overcome the species barrier resulting in zoonotic uh, transmission to a person with direct contact with livestock or with animal livestock. Okay? Uh, Balhusen in 2014 has characterized MRSA into community associated uh, MRSA, CA MRSA, healthcare or hospital associated MRSA, and livestock associated LA MRSA. So, the objective of my study is to investigate the prevalence of MRSA among veterinary staff and farm workers in Trungano, Malaysia, to detect the presence of nuke gene, which indicates the presence of Staphylococcus aureus, and MACA gene, which indicates the uh, presence of MRSA, using PCR, and third, to determine the antibiotic resistant pattern or profiles of this uh, as aureus and MRSA, collected using the uh, normal Kirby ball method. So quickly on the methodology overview, I'll go very fast. Our sample is collected upon approval from the Human Ethics Committee, and samples is transported within the same day after it is being collected in the farm. Uh, phenotypic identification will be carried out, mainly the gram staining or the biochemical tests. Uh, identification of the new gene to identify Staph aureus, identify of the MACA gene to indicate that it is the MRSA, and lastly, uh, you could, could not see over there, is actually the antibiotic uh, susceptibility test, the disc diffusion test, to actually we want to see the pattern of what kind of such, uh, resistance uh, this bacteria uh, are against the antibiotics. Okay. <clears throat> So quickly, sample collection, a total of 54 nasal samples were collected uh, from 54 personnel, uh, both oral and nasal swaps. The collected samples was placed into the falcon tubes, uh, sorry, falcon tubes containing carry blair transport medium, stored in ice box, and bought in laboratory within, usually within six hours after the sample is being collected. So the picture shows uh, the, one of the examples of the farmers 
that uh, they, they take their samples themselves after they have been shown by uh, my students and for example, uh, for my students. Okay, so, so they do the oral swaps and also the nasal swaps. So quickly, after we did the phenotypic identification, we detect the new gene that you can see from here. It is the uh, primer for the primer sequence for the new gene and MAG gene that being used in this study to detect the, uh, the gene. The antibiotic susceptibility test, uh, we have uh, included 12 antibiotic discs, mainly oxalcilin, sulfocetin, tetracycline, all that 12 uh, major antibiotics, uh, and their potency are based on the clinical and laboratory standard CLSI uh, guidelines. So for the results uh, for phenotypic identification for the nasal swab, we are able to identify 33% uh, out of the 54 samples collected are positive for staph aureus, and for the oral swabs, we identify 31%. That's 17 patients uh, having staph aureus in their oral cavity. So we run a PCR to detect the new gene indication or confirmation of there is actually a staph aureus. Uh, we're able to detect at uh, 278 base, base pair that 11% uh, or 6 out of the 54 samples are having new gene in nasal swab samples and in oral samples we have 22% which is about 12 out of 54 samples. After that, those that positive for uh, new gene uh, indicating staph aureus proceed with identification or detection of MAG-A gene at the best pair of 533 uh, best pair. Uh, we have found only one sample. Uh, I'm not sure whether it's uh, luckily, but it's only one sample have been found in the nasal swab samples and none were found in the oral swab. In regards to the antibiotic profiles, resistance, uh, for nasal swabs, we found that uh, one, they have 100% uh, resistant towards canamycin. You can see uh, roughly in the, in the slides over there. Uh, and uh, the green indicate that the uh, bacteria is still susceptible with the antibiotics. The yellow is intermediates and the red are actually already delivered resistance. So the alarming is usually the penicillin. You can see the P and the K, the canamycin. Okay. And these are all uh, these antibiotics are based on the CLSI guideline, as I mentioned earlier. For the oral swab samples, okay, uh, a little bit different. Okay, almost all develop start to develop resistance towards all the major antibiotics. Okay, for uh, okay, we will discuss later on. Okay, for the discussion, the prevalence of MRSA among veterinary staff and farm workers at Trangano is. Well, considerably low at 2% compared to other countries, but it's not completely, completely eradicated because we only sample the oral cavity and the nasal, nasal, nasal cavity. Okay? Uh, studies have been shown that uh, although MRSA is usually present at the anterior nares of the, patient, uh, of the human, uh, they might be a carrier to MRSA in other parts of the body, usually the groin area, Okay, at the, the clothes or at the, the back of the ear and at the body, at the hands, for example. Okay? So we can't rule out that they are actually free from carrying MRSA. Uh, a study in Danish has shown that similar, almost similar, about 3.9% present in their vets. Uh, MRSA prevalence among vets and Dutch pig farmers is quite high on 20, at 26% and 4.6% respectively. And... Uh, in uh, the prevalence of MRSA was found to be 26 in pig farmers, 12.5% in vets attending in international pig health convention. Okay, you could get MRSA from that. And lastly, MRSA prevalence in nasal of pig farmers on MRSA positive farms at uh, 86%, German vets at 45%, and US pig farmers at 45% are relatively higher compared to what that is found in Malaysia. So, uh, to discuss staph aureus found of nasal uh, samples were found at 100% resistant towards canamycin. And uh, meanwhile, isolates found in oral samples was 100% resistant towards sulfotaxin. Only sulfocetin is able to inhibit S. aureus completely, that what has been found in my study. Uh, 
MRSA isolates was found to be resistant towards clindamycin, carmicin, penicillin, and chloramphenicol. Uh, resistance are usually developed under selective antibiotic pressures. We get same things that have been presented just now, that the misuse of antibiotics is also happening in Malaysia. So to conclude, 11% of nasal swab and 22 oral swabs were present of as aureus. 2% of the MRSA is present at the nasal swab samples. Uh, it can be seen that the prevalence of MRSA among veterinary staff and farm workers in Terengganu, Malaysia is quite low. So uh, that's the reference. I'd like to acknowledge the main funder of this project, the Higher Ministry of Education of Malaysia. And uh, I won't be present here if, without the travel grant by the OSHA. And of course, I'd like to uh, acknowledge my colleagues and students for their help and commitment in this research. Uh, thank you. Say